Empoder Alive, I have an important notice to all of you. We saved the best for last. <laughs> Welcome, ISIS. <laughs> If you search in Wikipedia for this person sitting beside me, you will find some our own uh, message like ISIS holds degrees from Stanford University and Harvard Business School. ISIS was named as one of the top 40 women under 40 in Kenya in 2011 by Business Daily Africa as well as shortlisted on the Forbes Top Youngest Power Women in Africa, on IT News Africa Top 10 Women in IST, and Africa Most Powerful Women in Tech 2013. She serves on the board of the Mango Three Orphan Trust in Kenya. She was elected as a young global leader by the World Economic Forum in 2012. But this not make Justice to ISIS. Thanks to the magic of Empoder Alive, thanks to the magic of two days together in Malaga, now I know a different ISIS, a better ISIS. I can imagine some stories which briefly I will share to you. I once upon a time in the late 90s, I imagine a cheerful, carefree, young, beautiful woman studying in Stanford, uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, participating in a lot of cocktails, parties, in the dot-com bubble, <laughs> that crazy years. Um, she was a brilliant student. He had social abilities. She could achieve success at any matter. She was direct witness of the board of Google, of Yahoo, of Amazon, and so many and many startups which now are leading the digital world. She could achieve success in politics, at university, at media, at business, even at Hollywood. So, all her family did. All her family is successful. But then the purpose come to her life. ISIS is half American and half Kenyan. And he decided to search for her route and go to live to Kenya. In Kenya, he contributed to develop media, to develop uh, mobile technology, digital tools, and at last he, find, he found her best purpose, focusing on the development of the African women. On behalf of the all African women, I say you thank you, Isis. Wow. Thank you. Wow. My imagination is more or less that's an amazing introduction. I was okay, like, wow, okay. this is very, um, actually very true. I think, I think I'm someone who ch chose to kind of come back uh, 20 years ago to Kenya and um, pretty much still there and ha had an amazing, you know, you never know what's going to happen at every step, but looking back, um, it's been amazing to be part of the growth of technology um, and empowerment of women. So, and that's where I am today. Yeah. In some way, the, the women are the materialization of your purpose because you had a lot of success stories mm -hmm. developing technology in Africa. Uh, shortly, you could uh, tell some of your past in Africa? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'll try not to speak too quickly. I know I can speak very fast. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I can tell you a bit about, um, you know, and we were talking yesterday about looking back 10 years. So maybe about 10 years or so ago, I was working at Google. Um, for my sins, I know these big tech is not popular here. Um, but Google had just opened in, in Kenya. 
And I was there, I'm a, on the business side, someone who does business development, partnerships, and it was really my direct exposure to working in a big tech company. And Google at the time was trying to build the future of the internet. So what we enjoy today in Africa in terms of infrastructure, um, cost of data devices, was all this long-term plan. And so Google was not there to make money. It was, we'll make money later. Um, so we were in an interesting position to have resources and, you know, the, the extent of the Google um, talent around the world who were also interested in Africa because Africa was, you know, an exciting place. It was, it was new it was, and all of that. But one of the experiences I had that's shaped kind of what I do today is um, I had a lot of experience working across many parts of Africa, a lot of business knowledge, but in big tech companies, it's the product managers who drive everything. I mean, the, the people on the business side are like down here, you know? And the product managers were not in Africa, um, didn't spend very much time. And um, I used to kind of really fight with this one person who was interestingly of, from the Mediterranean, um, based in London. And he was making a lot of decisions about what we did, but I had to kind of work with him on a local level. And we were in uh, Uganda um, working on an SMS product. So the idea back then was, and this is when mobile phones were growing rapidly, but it was SMS based, basic phones. Um, the mobile internet was, you know, people like worked at Google had it, but not many other people. And we were building this SMS search. So the idea is you could search for obviously a very limited amount of information, but you could search an SMS and then you build this, S this habit of searching. So by the time you get internet access, you would um, understand how to search, right? So it was this user. And so his image of users was, like very, very rural people in agriculture who needed to understand agriculture prices. And my view was more the urban setting, right? Well, most of the first adopters of the internet are gonna be in the urban areas, given infrastructure and all these things. And even though I didn't have the language then, we both had our biases. You know, he, he had a very specific view. I had a very different view. The data didn't tell us which way was right. And I think that it, we, we used to just, um, kind of struggle and also look at, from a gender perspective, there was no place for, um, none of the product managers were met were women, um, and the, the products that we were designing, I kept having this idea that you, know, you have kind of a woman at the center of, of using this, and it's like he and I could never see. So it's something that has carried through with me to today when I think about technology and inclusion and bias and what gets made and what gets distributed and who makes those decisions, yeah. Your, your name, Isis, is also the name of a feminine Egypt. What, mm -hmm. How do you feel about it? <laughs> I feel great, despite c current events or previously current events, but um, I've always, it, it's a very unique name and it always gives me a chance to talk about you know, who Isis was and why it was named after her, but I'm, I'm very proud to have the name. Yeah. Of course, it was an off topic, but I have another off topic. Uh, this morning, soon, uh, you sent me a video, oh, yeah. video which mm -hmm. uh, my friend Angel is going to show. And at the first time when I saw this video, I was uh, expecting some corporate video, some marketing video. And when I found what I, I found, I was going to uh, call you to say, "Isis, you mistake. This, <laughs> this is not the, the video you uh, pretended to, to send, probably." But then I. I show that video until, until the end, and I am in, in love with this video. Oh, wow. I hope I sent the right video. Um, let's see. <laughs> Women I... work. Women work. Yes. My name is Julie Alma Majale. That's my government name. My business is Aus Yoga. Uh, for those of you who know Aumas in your life, you call them Aus. So, Auma, Aus Yoga. So, um, Aus Yoga is a uh, first and foremost a well being business and it's based in the practice of yoga. So we're using yoga as the physical fitness, as the mental and physical well-being that we're going to be using to improve our fitness, improve our lifestyle. But yeah, as a business, especially as a young Kenyan business, the struggle is real. Between getting clients, between making sure that you're giving um, a product that people actually want and not just something you're personally passionate about, 
uh, making sure that you have the necessary requirements, the statutory requirements. Am I paying KRA? Am I paying this? Am I paying that? It always seems like money is flowing out of your pocket and not enough money is going back in. So that was one of the challenges that had cash flow. Another one is in our uh, internet, the social media. Like it sounds so fun to say like, yeah, you just open a page and then you post and then people like and then ta-da. Hey, somebody lied. <laughs> and I was wondering, why I'm not, am I putting all these things and it's not coming back the way I'm thinking it's supposed to come back. How I came to learn about Women Work and then more specifically the Digital Future Program. Um, I was introduced to the Facebook group. I remember just somebody telling me, ah, there's this group of women supporting each other, their businesses. I'm like, yes. Um, jumped in. And then for a long time, it was just like, yeah, conversations, people talking about businesses and like with tips, daily tips. And then every day there was something that they were doing. Like, this is a day for welcoming new participants. This is a day like, oh, maybe you're talking about finance and like webinars. And like, hmm. People are onto something. And then I thought, okay, I should really start taking advantage of this now that I'm actually thinking as a business owner. So I started like now even interacting more with other people on the group, meeting people on the group, having chats on the side. Um, and that was really, really helpful. Like just seeing somebody else with the same struggles. And then at some point they're like, yeah, okay, we have this new program, uh, digital feature program. It's all about social media and how you're actually growing your impact, growing your reach. And I was like, thank you, Jesus, because I needed it. I recommend everyone take this program. Wherever you are, I think it's important to learn the tips that they have given us in this training so that you can use them to serve your best goal, your best future, where you want to be. If you can take this program, if you're in a position that you can take the program, please, please, please do it. Not just for you, but for your business and for where you want your business to be. Helpful to communicate than the, the person who benefits from your work. That's what women, women work. Uh, that's the next generation internet in which I believe and also you believe, of course. Please, Isis, tell, tell us something more about women work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was enjoyable to watch that video again because in many ways it was, you know, what Google was envisioning 10 years ago when we were making, you know, access to the internet um, easier. But women work really was born out of this, um, kind of more broadly speaking, when you look at the African continent today, um, it's developing very quickly, um, but, but the markets are not equal. In fact, I was talking to someone earlier today about how different the markets are, over 50 countries. And so you have very advanced, technologically advanced countries like Kenya, where I live, um, and some other markets, and then you have a huge disparity um, both socioeconomically within countries, but also access to the internet and, and affordable access. It's mostly affordability that's the issue now. And as we kind of look to the future and the digital economy is where all the governments focus, they, you know, this is what we need to make happen, uh, we have a huge amount of unemployment. So like 10, 12 million people per year enter the workforce across the continent and we do not have 10 million jobs by any means. So there's a lot of, um, you know, a growth, but a lot of challenge in terms of the size of the population and, and youthful, youthful population. Um, and so when I look towards the digital economy, and there's at the same time, there's a lot of wealth being created. So last year, over uh, $2 billion came into investing from venture capital, primarily from Europe and, and US, into Africa, into primarily four markets, um, the largest markets, and primarily to men, I mean like 99%. And when you look at that, you see that, you know, there's, there's huge wealth being created already, will continue to be created, and where will women be in all of this, right? They're not the investors and they're not getting the money as, as founders. And so there, that's an element of it in the tech space, but more broadly, most of the businesses are, like her, like an SME, small businesses, is really where most of the, 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 the jobs are being generated. And so my thinking in developing women work was to say, you know, there's, there's different efforts at different levels, but from a bottoms up level, how do you actually give, and I really liked what Eve was saying earlier around the, comp the digital competency. Um, so someone like her has the basic digital skills. She has digital skills, she's online, she has a, desk, a computer, but the mindset and the capacity and competency to take her business to the next level using 
analytics, using, you know, understanding, um, digitizing her business in different ways. That is where not a lot of people are focused. So a lot of the government effort is basic education, basic digital skills, or create as many software developers as we can. So we need both ends, but there's a lot in the middle. Um, and that's where I think that if, if there isn't efforts like women work, that at the heart of it is a network, a digital network of women entrepreneurs um, who have offering peer-to-peer -peer support, um, but also have access to very specific programming that we do. With that in mind, then they will have the kind of skills, ability, mindset to grow their businesses into the new economy. And not otherwise, they'll be obsolete. And then you have um, kind of really kind of the tech forward businesses that will ideally get the funding and actually be part of the, the wealth creation. But also women tend to build businesses that serve other women, so better products being built, and they tend to hire more women as well. So you're also getting a lot of benefits from job creation and in addition, women tend to, to kind of invest more into education in their communities. Um, so there's a lot of you know, benefits all around. And so that's at the heart of what we're trying to do. And also, um, and a lot of that is, I think also was talked about yesterday by um, one of the speakers from, I think the European Commission around awareness and understanding. And, and a lot of that is what we try to do with the communities, understanding um, all the opportunities there are from a digital perspective and, and ways that um, you can, you know, expand your own knowledge and, and what you're doing. So I think that's, that's the idea behind it, yeah. Africa is a very vast um, yeah. uh, diversity continent, uh, perhaps so vast as your project, but I would like to, to ask you in, in which areas are you more focused, uh, where, which kind of challenge do mm -hmm. you see in the different parts of Africa? Uh, you know, I, I tend to focus, um, what I'm doing right now is very Kenya-centric, but with, with um, expansion, we're expanding into Ghana, actually we're kicking off something in Ghana, and I've done a lot of Pan-African work, so very um, interested and excited about expanding to other parts of the continent, but it's also, it is a very large continent, it is very diverse, so we have a lot of language, um, you know, we have the Anglophone, we have the Francophone, um, Lucifone and one Spanish-speaking country. <laughs> so, so you have, uh, it, it tends to follow the languages, right? The connections follow that way. The conferences tend to be around language. So uh, with that, you know, I have a lot of interest in expansion, but I think it's also important to understand what you're doing very well in a particular country, because it's such a big continent that you can um, kind of say that you're doing something pan-African and it's a bit of a, a vanity metrics or something because it's not deep enough in terms of the actual impact. And a lot of what um, is hyper-localized, there's a lot of technology that's very global, but a lot of things are very, very contextual to how you run and operate a business in a particular market. Um, but one of the, the encouraging things is the, the, uh, the, there's been different, so Africa's also broken into different regional bodies, but there's um, as of this year, uh, the launch of the Continental Free Trade Act, which is designed to create one economy over time and be able to bring down a lot of the barriers of trade between countries. Because right now, if I want to go into Ghana, it's going to be more expensive. It's, yes, it's on the other side of the continent, but it's, it's, the, it's like the taxation and a lot of this friction that makes it hard. So we'll be, you know, rolling out, I mean, there'll be a lot of rolling out of different incentives and reducing those barriers. So I'm quite excited for that because it opens up a lot more um, opportunity for businesses and, and people to really trade and, and grow the African economy as, as, as a single economy over time. Yeah. For your life, you know very well yeah. the, the model of development in the US, in Europe, in probably in other parts of the world. But I ask you about the model of development that you desire for Africa, the, the development that is possible in 10, 20, 30 years. Mm. Difficult question. Yeah, that's a very difficult question. I, I do think it, it really has to be underpinned by, by digital and, and technology. I just don't see, um, and I think that's where, I mean, that, that's where young people are, are excited about, driven, motivated by, and our population is, is it's like the opposite of Europe and North America. It's like 60, 70 percent under the age of like 25. So it's really, really young. And that, uh, and being able to use, uh, you know, how quickly people adapt, you know, someone will quickly talk about crypto, and crypto is actually quite big in Kenya, and, and no one, like, I guess technically no one was training their <laughs> capacity around that, but there's certain things that that move really fast, and so they, 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 that, that um, ensuring that, that 
people who have the knowledge and the competency within digital to be real participants, I think, is, is a huge avenue to, um, to development. Yeah. Could it be possible that the next uh, big startup, the next unicorn, will be born in Africa? Yeah, definitely. There's several unicorns now, I think at least five or six, uh, mostly in fintech. And um, fintech, actually, Kenya is the home of fintech with M-Pesa, the beginning of it. But the, the unicorns are really out of Nigeria. Um, and I think South Africa has a few as well. So yeah. populated, so big country, Nigeria, in, in some way, could be one of the motors of the yeah. develop for continent. Yeah, absolutely. OK, I invite the uh, audience to think and make questions as soon as you want. In the meanwhile, I will continue speaking to ISIS. I am especially interested in the cultural diversity. I know that in Kenya, the Swahili is mm -hmm. an official language. And I don't know if you at women work, women work, um, case this, this kind of uh, cultural uh, conditions or English is the uh, business uh, way uh, in, at, at all. Mm. What do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, English is certainly the, the business language in, let's say, a conference like this in Nairobi would be in English, for sure. Um, but then when you get to uh, small businesses, the markets, then, you know, Swahili for sure, and it's like the lingua franca because there's like 40-something different ethnic groups who all have their own language in addition to Swahili. So Swahili kind of ties, kind of ties everything together. And, you know, interestingly, as what many languages are not growing, Swahili is growing um, and becoming an official language in other parts of, you know, beyond East Africa. So that's quite encouraging. Yeah. Amazing. Any yeah. questions in the audience? Not by now? Yes. At the up. up in Thank there. you. Um, Go on. Yes, Af Africa is, is uh, driving a lot of uh, attention uh, and building on also on uh, Ana Maria uh, presentation in the politic, the geopolitics uh, arena. And um, there is, there might, one, one may, may, may think about a neo-colonization in digital terms as well. China is building a lot of cooperation projects and uh, with a lot of success. Uh, some, thing, uh, some people think that it might be a risk other might be uh, uh, more in the opportunity uh, side. I would like to know your opinion because uh, also as a half American, uh, but also a Kenyan, which has uh, uh, some uh, projects with China. Uh, so w what, is your, uh, what is your opinion? And uh, maybe, yes, what, what kind of suggestions uh, may you uh, bring to the policy makers that are here in the room also for European policy in the digital, maybe especially in the in digital. The Great question. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you said in the digital <laughs> because it's, you know, there, there is a lot happening uh, in different parts of the continent, including Kenya in that respect. I think I certainly see what, from a Kenya perspective, that there's a lot of open, it's a very open country and very open to like involvement from everywhere. So um, I think that the US has been very influential, um, very strong ties to Silicon Valley. Um, Europe, I think increasingly from like venture capital, um, you know, type of relationships and the proximity. Uh, and then China, it has, I think the main, uh, Japan has actually been quite influential. Um, a lot of the early stage investment, some of the most active early stage investors is actually a Japanese firm. Um, and, but with China, there has been uh, kind of this relationship with specifically Alibaba um, doing, doing investing in um, competitions to get you know, young people to start technology companies. And so they've had a lot of strong interest, uh, broadly speaking, around the continent, and that's where you've seen it. But I haven't seen um, 
you know, too much more but I, from China specifically, but I don't think Kenya has, uh, you know, a, 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 at any any kind of resistance, I would say, to any any kind of partnership or investment that that seems to, to be beneficial. Uh, that's yes, and I think that you know, many ways, uh, you know, China doesn't, uh, you know, kind of really focus that they focus more on the just purely economic aspect of, of something versus, you know, the U.S. has has other um, you know you know perspectives that that kind of come into in, into engaging. Um, I think that's the only thing around the dynamics, but otherwise it's, it's pretty open. And okay, that's enough. Any other question? How is working the world, the world of the cryptocurrencies in, in Africa? Um, there's, there's a lot of usage and there's, I think, a lot of, you know, Governments trying to figure out what to, you know, what to do about it. But I think the the user growth is is certainly there and reduces, um, you know, friction around currencies. A lot of currency issues that, that we're having right now and, and movement of money that's constrained uh, otherwise. So that's where it's really coming from. Yeah. My question was focused more in the lack of uh, bank access in 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 Africa and in the opportunities to make business and, and get funding and uh, stimulate the, the commerce and I don't know if you see new opportunities with these digital uh, cryptocurrencies and, and if you are working on it with your women. Yeah, and, and not yet. I mean, interestingly, we, we just participated in a, a conference on digital assets and cryptocurrency recently, um, but not yet doing anything directly with the network. And I think there is a lot of, um, you know, opportunity as well as apprehension, but also we have, uh, you know, in Kenya specifically, M-Pesa is um, our mobile money that you started back in 2007, but it has, I mean, over 30 million people use it. I mean, in like, 20% of the GDP flows through it. So it is so easy to, to use and, and it's, it's just part of everyday life. Um, and it's really when it kind of comes to kind of cross border that, um, that other forms, you know, are, are of interest, yeah. Okay, is there any other question? Yes, Jan? One, okay, so just a brief one. Rural versus big cities, uh, what are the challenges for women? Oh, for women? Um, yeah, so actually, good question. I think from an urbanization, I mean, roughly 20, 30% of the continent's urbanized, uh, but, but rapidly urbanizing. And so most people live in rural areas, and most people live in small towns or very rural areas. I think that a lot of the, um, you know, I think benefits and advancement of, of women um, is more concentrated in, in cities, I would say. And so you don't have, even though, Many countries have really good laws around gender equality in different ways. It's not always kind of true <laughs> everywhere. Um, and so you do, I think, some of the main challenges, depending on the countries you're in, is education levels. There'll be a huge disparity uh, between girls and boys. And then, um, you, know, you know, practices around you know, gender-based violence can, can also be, well, I'm not sure if it's rural that versus urban, but it's, an, it's a real issue. And then just the burden of uh, domestic work, right? So that the expectations of, of women in terms of everything, childcare, household, everything is is disproportionately, you know, um, on on women, and so that that also prevents uh, as much participation, in, I think, in rural areas in other tor other forms of economic um, activities. Yeah. Next question, please. Yes, th thanks, Isis. Yeah. Um, I was wondering how it, what about the gender gap in STEM and in ICT professionals in Kenya and in African context? Because you know, of course, in Europe it's a big problem. We have about 9 million ICT specialists in Europe. 80% is male, you know? And uh, we need to get to 20 million by, by 2030, you know? So, uh, of course, we need women as well, no? But I wonder, because also you refer to it's a very young population. Yeah. Is there any difference? Do you see more hopes there to involve women in ICT jobs and uh, ICT kind of, yeah, specialists? Yeah, there's a lot of effort. I mean, there's been, <laughs> there's so many initiatives. 
uh, across different countries um, to increase the number of, of women in, in the programs. I think that, and, and then there's also been a growth in alternatives to university education. So pure, like companies like Andela, pure programming, and so you do programming you know, for two years. And, and so th there's, um, and I think there's some of the stats that show it's fairly, I don't know, 30, 40 percent, but depending on which data you're looking at, um, of women coming in, but there's, there's a huge amount of effort, but still, I would say, for kind of what you see in the market, it's still mostly, um, you know, men, but, but a huge amount of effort, yeah. Any other question? Sí. Yolanda, please. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, um, ACs for your participation and um, for everything that you're doing, because to me it is really important. And this reality is really important. And I would like to relate this to what Nena was mentioning at the beginning of the event, uh, that right now we're building the internet and the internet of the future 10 years from now. And I wanted to relate this to a uh, citizen uh, digital sovereignty under construction, and um, I would like for you to give us some brush strokes of what you think in terms of long-term view, long-term vision. How are you helping them build their businesses and um, for them, because you're contributing for them to build up a business, but also you're contributing to the next generation internet because we're going to have powerful women that are going to have a voice and a say. How is this going to affect the citizens' digital sovereignty? The fact that these women are going to be present uh, in uh, the internet. I will make a, a short uh, a question um, related to uh, our president Yolanda Rueda uh, uh, question. Uh, in, she refers to the um, uh, matters that we have uh, talked during these two days, like uh, citizen digital models, uh, digital so so sovereignty, um, and, the, and the role that uh, women can have in, in the future, in 10 years in the future, related to the big uh, topics that we, we have discussed Run this empowered life. Which, which is your view, your personal view? Hmm. So, it's, it's, of the topics we've it's, discussed, it's complex. <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite complex. Mm. Uh, what is your personal view uh, about the future of digital citizenship related with your project? Mm. Um, I, I think the such a good question. Um, but I think for me, it's, it's, it's the, uh, really the, the mindset and the awareness that, um, that, that women can be real participants. Because I, I think right now, it's more like technology is happening to pe <laughs> people rather than, and, and that the, the real contributors and creators are, are only developers, right? And then there's, there's for a lot of women who never had the opportunity or never had access, that's kind of the people over there, right? So, but you have this mass here. Um, and so being able to, you know, think about that there's this competency and skills that you can de develop and have this mindset, like I think we talked about earlier, that it's, we're always learning, right? The learning's not over. Um, that you can kind of build this, this competence to yourself. Um, that, that for me is something that, um, would be a huge kind of benefit because then it's, it's, it's life it's lifelong and you're and you're not feeling that there's this binary world of, of the, the the technology people and then everybody else <laughs> which it generally feels like now yeah. it's, it's complex but uh, just yeah. your presence here yeah. in this meeting yeah. is uh, very significant so thanks in, in my name in the name of Yolanda yes. and in the name of all Empodera life yeah. perhaps yeah. is there any last question then I will make the last question. Where do women smile more? In California or in Kenya? <laughs> oh, let, oh, that's a tough one. I think, I, I, I think people still smile in Kenya quite a bit. The good times and the bad, yeah. <laughs> so. That's what I need to hear. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs> Thank you.
regresar a la tierra. Go back to Earth, continent of emotions, African equation. Go back to the bodily energy factors. Goodbye to the old portrait of absence. Work, women, presence as a breath. Connect ourselves. They, Isis, you, we, Isis.